Now, let, let's have another look at a story that also has been developing this week. There's been a big increase in the number of people across the East Midlands seeking help with paying their rent. It comes in the wake of the introduction of the coalition's under occupancy penalty, or what Chris would no doubt call the bedroom tax. Before its introduction last month, Sunday Politics spoke to a tenant from Derby who was worried about what it would mean for her. Well, Tim Parker has been back to see what's happened. Jill McDermott unpacks her weekly groceries. They haven't come from a shop, but a food bank. Since the benefit changes came in, Jill finds herself in debt and behind on the rent for the first time in her life. I didn't even know these places existed and I happened to see it on telly and I asked to be referred thinking, oh no, you know, no chance. And, but yeah, they said, absolutely, you know, they do an assessment of your income and your outgoings and um, their biggest, pe the biggest, largest number of people are helping at the moment is people who are suffering from benefit cuts. Jill helps to look after her grandchildren and is a full-time carer for her father who lives nearby. But her two-bedroomed flat is deemed to be too big and that means she's having to find £16 extra a week in rent. Because I've managed to pay a little bit off, I'm paying a little bit each week, you know, to protect me property, protect myself from eviction. But I'm only doing that by because I can go to the food bank. You know, it's, it's food money I'm using. Jill's landlord is the housing provider Derwent Living. Its chief executive says the housing benefit changes are affecting some tenants more than others. Well, when we came into this, and it all began obviously on April the 1st, 750 or so of our residents were subject to the bedroom tax. Eight weeks in, and it is still early days, about a third of those residents, so about 250 or so, um, are actually uh, not paying what has become known as the bedroom tax. So the bulk of our residents, I have to say, have found ways to, to deal with um, the additional payments they're having to make. There are all types of families in all types of situations right across the East Midlands, including here in Loughborough, now facing life with the under-occupancy charge or bedroom tax. Stephanie Concannon is a mum of two whose children are too young to be eligible for their own rooms. She's found a part-time job to afford the under-occupancy charge she now faces. I have to pay a little bit more than the bedroom tax, but I'm still better off um, and it's worked out a lot better for me as well. But for Jill in Derby, the future's looking more difficult. I just sometimes, you know, you, you just want to put your head in your hands and cry. More debt, ever increasing. And as I said last time, I think the courts are going to be absolutely overrun with cases. They're not just going to be able to cope with all the eviction cases that are going to come up. Jill's still waiting to hear if she can get any extra cash from her council to help her. Thousands more like her across the region face the same weight. Mark Spencer, is this whole issue in danger of becoming David Cameron's poll tax? No, I, I don't think so. And I think actually, when you when you look at the fundamentals behind it, it's about trying to bring fairness to the system. There are 250,000 people in overcrowded accommodation. There are two million people waiting on a list to try and get a council house. Uh, and there are all of these spare bedrooms within the system. And it's about trying to bring balance so that those people that have got spare rooms uh, can release them. And those people that are desperate for extra space can have it. You, you're, you're shaking your head there, Chris Williamson, but surely he's got a point. No, he hasn't got a point at all. This is a combination of cruelty and incompetence. Cruelty and incompetence? Absolutely, because we're talking about people's homes here and what the Conservatives, rather than building houses for people, they actually want to throw people out of the home where they maybe have brought their, their families up. And the fact is, there isn't enough uh, single bedroom properties available. Take my home city well, of Derby, would, would for Labour, example. Would, would Labour get rid of it? If, if I, I would certainly like to see Labour get rid of it. I think it's pretty clear, given the uh, the statements that we've made, that it is unlikely to survive well, a change of government. But look, in Derby, <laughs> why I say it's cruelty and incompetence, we have it's people's homes, but the fact is that there aren't enough single bedroom properties available. Only well, what was Labour doing during those years in well, government? Well, we've got a lot more houses than what the Conservatives are doing now. What Labour were doing 
doing, actually, was they did this with people in private rented accommodation. So those in pe private rented accommodation weren't getting this extra subsidy and still aren't today, Chris. So was that cruel, incompetent or both when you well, did that to well, people in private well, rented well, accommodation? Well, no, but what we're talking about here is applying this to people living in council and housing association accommodation. Rented. People who are, uh, you know, by definition, very often living on very modest incomes without the resources to be able to pay well, this so additional the rent. In and they're well, hold on, Mark, you're forcing people, because there aren't enough dwellings available, only 271 came available uh, in Derby last year, and there are 2,700 people affected by this. They're going to be forced into the private sector, well, let, let, where the rent is considerably higher. I mean, we are inevitably going to have stories, aren't we, over the weeks yes. to come yes. of evictions. Now, how are you as an MP going to well, respond uh, to that? Clearly, the government recognises that there are people under severe pressure, and that's why they've put in this fund of £150 million to yeah. help those who though? are in, in that position. And it needs local authorities to step up to the plate but as well Mark, and try and assist those people rather than paying their executives uh, 100,000, 150,000 pounds a money year that the government put some has, of that cash But the money that. that the government's made available for this so-called hardship fund is inadequate. It, is, it doesn't actually meet the, the demand which is going to be placed on it. Why don't but you build some more houses, though, surely boost surely the economy and put people back into employment? Why don't yeah, you do that? Why don't Chris you build Williamson, some more houses? Uh, uh, surely we heard in, in Tim's report, we heard from Stephanie who says she's coped. We heard from the housing chief who said that two-thirds of his tenants are coping. So well, it's very early days and you said a third of them are struggling, already falling behind with their rent. We're only a month or so into the scheme. How are people living on extremely low incomes expected to be able to okay, find this additional very, very money? I mean, you, you have to say hats off to Stephanie in that report who's actually done something to her sister self and, and stepped up to the plate uh, and people like her should be encouraged and praised, frankly. What, okay. to, to, to go into further into poverty? It's absolutely outrageous and appalling. Okay, for the moment, thank you very much indeed.